Hello, this is Killican, and one of Disney's most annoying practices lately has been compulsively remaking its animated classics as live-action movies. Here's the thing, though. I'm not even really bothered by it. Most of Disney's classics were made some time ago, and not everyone has the patience to watch an older movie, for various reasons. Plus, not everyone likes cartoons. Not sure why, but there's just no accounting for taste. As long as they're fun, I say kick back, pop some corn, and have a good time. But alas, most have been pretty lackluster. From the infamously wooden performances by the digital animals in Lion King, to the rush delivery of lions in Beauty and the Beast. I still haven't seen the Aladdin remake because I still haven't forgiven the deletion of Iago. And don't even get me started on Maleficent, which seems to exist more as a declaration of war against Sleeping Beauty rather than a loving homage to the timeless classic. Dumbo tried too hard to force the less interesting human characters on us, and for overtly political reasons decided to make the charismatic businessman the bad guy at the last minute. Also haven't seen Pete's Dragon, but remembering the god-awful original, it can only be an improvement. The Jungle Book, while still not accurate to the book, was equally good as the original in its own right. But best so far is the cherished Germanic folktale, as only the movie genius man Kenneth Branagh can film it, Cinderella. Like John Favreau's The Jungle Book, Cinderella doesn't take itself too seriously, though with enough sincerity not to force in a reference to a famous SNL skit tied to a cast member. Primarily a feminine story, but with enough wit, humor, and masculine presence not to make it uncomfortably girly. Also did a better job at adding depth to the villainess than, say, Maleficent, which tried so hard to rationalize her cruelty as to make her a whiny, emo, anti-hero, rather than the scarier, much more fun, self-proclaimed mistress of all evil. Lady Germain, played by Kate Blanchett, is shown to have a tragic past. Her first husband died, she overhears Ella's dad confess he's still in love with his late wife, and once he dies, she constantly bullies Ella and seeks to further only herself and her own daughters. And while we get her bitterness, it's never made out to seem a legitimate excuse. The prince plays a much more prominent role in this one. He even actually has a name. Like in the animated classic, the king is obsessed with finding a wife for his son, but more out of a sincere concern for Kit and his kingdom's future, on account of his own waning health. No cartoony obsession with being a grandpa in this one. And like any good Disney movie, it has its dark side. The brief sequences of politicking, scheming, and shady backroom deals between the conniving Grand Duke and Lady Germain gives it a nice Game of Thrones-ish undertone, a fitting addition since two of the cast members were in Game of Thrones, though this show works out considerably, decidedly better for them. Helen Bonham Carter's fairy godmother is a much younger, perkier presence than the original, but is equally charming in its own right. In fact, that's a good way to describe the entire film as a whole. Charming. And that's all it really needs to be. A cute, fun retelling of the Brothers Grimm classic fairy tale. One very unfair criticism I've heard is that it makes Cinderella weaker, specifically because when she's locked in the tower, rather than shouting for help and enlisting the help of the talking mice, she starts singing, refusing to let her stepmother drive her to despair. First off, I'm not sure how refusing to wallow in self-pity is a weakness. Secondly, it was her singing that got her rescued. And thirdly, there were no talking animals to help her. The popular mice characters, Jack and Gus, are in it briefly, but they don't talk, much less steal keys and out with the cat. That criticism crumbles like House of Cards after Spacey got caught diddling. And FYI, a weak character would be someone who lets despair warp them into a snooty, elitist witch who puts a terrible curse on a little baby girl just because of something her daddy did. Wink. Another unfair criticism is that Ella could and should have moved in with her friend when offered in the movie, that she ended up leaving the chateau anyway, so her insistence on staying was dumb. 
wrong again. With her father dead and Germain wanting nothing to do with her, all she had left was the chateau, her birthright. Likewise, once the king died of his illness, all Kit had left was his kingdom. But they both found something more important in each other. She left home not to escape a bully, but to make a new home and start a new family. Needless to say, I love it. A classic story retold with some changes, but doing loving homage to the original. In short, Kenneth Branagh's Cinderella is a live-action remake done right. A unique flavor without being revisionist, a far cry from the self-loathing that warped Sleeping Beauty into Maleficent. But naysayers, rest assured, you will always have the original. Unlike Maleficent, in which the closing narration verbally rebukes the animated masterpiece it's based on and proclaims itself the real version of the story. Way to spit in the fan base's eye, Disney. <sighs> Did I mention I friggin' hate Maleficent? Okay, I'm done venting now. Anyway, thanks for watching, fellow Disney fans. Please like and share. Don't forget to subscribe, and peace out.